I'm getting ready to do a multi-track recording of an ensemble. Let's see how the chunks feature in DP can be used during the tracking process to help organize and speed the recording session along. You can see that I've set up Digital Performer with a recording template. I have audio tracks that are receiving signal from my 896 audio interface. I've also set up a master fader and a series of aux tracks. I have an aux track for a reverb return, and I'm using aux tracks as subgroups for the guitar tracks, bass tracks, drum tracks, and even a subgroup of the drum overhead mics. You can see the audio monitor window is displayed and showing the input record levels. I've also got the chunks window open, and you can see that this DP session currently contains a single sequence chunk. When we're ready to record, if we want to use a click track, I can set the tempo I want and turn on the DP click. As the ensemble records, I can create new sequence chunks for each take. I can do that by selecting the original sequence chunk and choosing Duplicate Sequence from the mini menu. DP makes an exact copy of the selected sequence chunk. I can option click to rename the new sequence. I can enable the new sequence and you see that the track layout has been duplicated and is ready to record. This allows me to easily duplicate track layouts for separate recording passes. I'll switch back to the original sequence chunk, and let's take a look at the mixer. You can see that in my original record template, I've gone ahead and set up effects plugins that I know I'll be using in my basic mix. You can see that most of these effects are currently bypassed. After I've done some recording, they'll be ready to enable and use in the mix. I can unbypass a plugin by option clicking. You'll notice that I have a Proverb Reverb plugin set up, and also a Masterworks limiter on the master fader. Now check this out. When I switch to the duplicated sequence chunk, the mixer for the new chunk has all the same plugins set up. This can be a real time saver. I know that I'm going to use a common set of effects for the different recordings. Duplicating the chunk also duplicates the mix and its effects, so that gives me a common starting point for all the recorded takes. I'll select and duplicate the sequence chunk and get a new chunk ready to record. If I enable the new chunk, you see the duplicated mix and effects. Here's a variation. If I select a sequence chunk and choose Duplicate Track Layout, I'll get a new sequence chunk with the same track layout, but this new sequence won't have any of the effects plugins from the original sequence. Okay, so now the recording session is finished and I have audio in my DP session file. In this session, the ensemble didn't record separate takes into separate sequence chunks. What they did was record multiple takes into a single sequence, sort of like recording onto a reel of tape. If you were recording a live performance, you'd get the same thing, a single long sequence with different songs along a single timeline. You can see that in this session, some markers were created to help navigate among the different takes. And you can see that two of these takes have been marked as the keeper takes. So now the goal is to separate the keeper takes out of the original recording so they can be worked on as individual sequences. So what I can do is make a selection that includes all the tracks from the beginning to the end of the keeper take. I'll use the selection buttons to define the selection in and out points based on the wiper location. I can be rough or precise in my selection because I can always trim the audio in the new sequence. Now I go to this menu in the Tracks window and choose Copy Selection to New Sequence. This opens a window that gives me options for creating a new sequence chunk. The default is to create the new sequence starting at bar 1. I'll name this new sequence and press OK. Now you see the new sequence chunk listed in the Chunks window. I'll play Enable the new chunk, and you can see that the selected tracks and audio from the original sequence have been recreated in the new chunk. I'll switch over to the mixer, and you can see that the mix and all the effects from the original sequence have also been copied to the new chunk. This allows me to set up a general mix in the original sequence, and then preserve that mix as I make new sequences from the keeper takes. I'll go back to the original sequence and go to the second keeper take. I'll select all the tracks for the duration of that take. I'll go to the Tracks window mini menu and make a new sequence. I'll name it, and you see the new sequence in the Chunks window. I'll switch to the mixer for this chunk and start to make changes. I'll enable plugins. I'll change plugin settings. I'll add new plugins to the mix. Here's a leveler on the master fader. Here's an EQ on the master fader. I'll change the mix levels and generally tweak the mix. Now I'm thinking that I like this new mix, and I'd like to be able to apply it to the first keeper take. How will I copy the mix from one sequence chunk to another? What I'll do is switch back to the first keeper sequence. You can see in the mixer that it has the older original mix. 
I'll switch back to the tracks window, and now I'm going to drag the chunk icon for the second keeper sequence to the left side of the tracks window for the first keeper take. What that does is copy the entire sequence chunk from sequence B into sequence A. This is a fast and easy way to combine separate sequences into a single sequence. Not only are all the tracks imported, but so is any data within those tracks, so that also makes this a handy way to move individual or groups of tracks between sequences. I'll zoom the track size so we can see the original sequence tracks and also the newly copied sequence tracks. In this case, I don't want the audio from the second keeper sequence, I just want the mix settings. So I'll select the contents of the imported tracks and just delete all that. Now I'll select the contents of the original tracks and drag them to the newly copied tracks. I'll select the original tracks which are now empty and delete them from the sequence. What I have now is the original audio copied into the newly imported tracks. If I switch to the mixer for the sequence, I see all the updated mix settings. There's my mastering limiter, there's my mastering EQ. This is the same mix from the second keeper sequence, and now it's been applied to the first keeper sequence. And the cool thing is that the individual keeper takes from this recording session are still accessible inside a single DP session file. Sequence chunks are a powerful way to work with multi-track recording and multiple takes in Digital Performer.